Our worship begins this morning with the penitential order found on page 351 of the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. Mercy endures forever. Hear are the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The response is on the opposite page, 350. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. You shall not steal. Amen. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midon. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. Then the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry 
and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites was now come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that is, it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and said to say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsorily Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have grazed upon you in your holy place, and I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the, as at night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul kings to you, your right hand holds me fast. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all, were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as, as some of them did, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us, on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse, worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or oh, those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. And then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush is not burned up. Moses was a fugitive. So he'd grown up in the luxury of the Egyptian palace part-time. He had killed a man. He wasn't even Egyptian, of course. He was a man with two homes, but no home. A man without a together family or country. Once he was a prince. But now he's a shepherd, if even that. Like Abraham before him, he was a wanderer looking for a place. And at Mount Oreb, also called Mount Sinai, he found it. He was told to take off his shoes, for he was on holy ground. And he did what everyone did when they entered the house. He took off his shoes because he had found his home. And he also found a family and a people. And God, God called him despite his stutter and his reluctance to lead. He tried to stall like most of us do. Wait, I can't do this. Give me a sign. Tell me who you are. What was that name again? Who should I say is calling? Doesn't help one bit to stall when God is doing the talking. Quiet, Moses. I am who I am. Maybe it's worth saying that Moses didn't go up the mountain looking for God. Maybe that explains his confusion and reluctance. But God went to the mountain looking for him. And the God who causes life, who is who God is, helped get a people through the wilderness from exile and slavery to freedom in a new land. But during that journey of 40 years, a generation of people struggled with hunger, thirst, and probably most of all, faith. Few, if any, made it to the promised land, to this freedom, to this new land, to this land flowing with milk and honey. Faith shifted to doubt and to anger 
And he gave up on Moses and his God in the process. They fell away. Some to die in the desert. Some to worship a golden calf. Others just to go back to Egypt where the troubles were easier to manage. Moses was laid to rest just within sight of the land. He didn't make it either. It wasn't the only time God's people have wondered if God has the power to save or whether God will save. Jesus was approached by his disciples, who wondered how God could possibly allow good people to suffer and die at the hands of Pilate, the evil men, or simply fall victim to an awful construction accident. If God were all powerful, why was it that these things happened? What had they done to deserve such a terrible fate? St. Luke links these two very different calamities. At first, Pilate murdering Jews who were visiting Jerusalem to worship there, and the other a construction accident, which for lack of a better term, just bad luck. The disciples want to know why they were punished. Jesus, of course, doesn't see either of them as punishment or as some perceived getting even by God, as some thought. It's all part of our human condition, part of the struggle that we live with. The question is how we will live in this time, in this wilderness. When we're struck by trouble, by wars, disease, doubt, what do we do? Do we give up on ourselves and possibly on God? Or do we repent, come to grips with life when it tries to overwhelm us? St. Luke uh, gives a hint of what Jesus has in mind. In that parable of the fig tree, it helps if we think of God not as, not as the one who wants to chop down the fig tree, but as the gardener who wants to do a little more digging and feeding. God looks at that tree, looks at us, and he says, well, let's give it one more year. Let's try again. Let's see if we can't get through this together. And the other truth about God is what Moses discovered. That that fire on Mount Oreb, which is God, cannot be extinguished. God will not abandon Moses. God will not leave the people alone in the wilderness, even though they might have wished it. <laughs> God will not leave us when we don't seem to be producing the fruit that we might. God and will instead dig around, water the plant, nurture us in hopes that we will find our way back to faith. The word is repent, to turn and return to faithfulness in God. In these days of conflict in Eastern Europe, as COVID continues to circulate throughout the world, as parents and children try to regain a rhythm at home and at school, I thought of these words written about 450 years ago 
they were more written for political purposes, but they seem to fit for our religious faith as well. You know them. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What well, we, we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Thomas Paine, of course, American Crisis, December 1776. Maybe this is what God instilled in humanity from the very beginning. Out of the wilderness, where we have struggled with challenge, we find what's worth holding on to and what is enduring and permanent. We find that the fire of God cannot be extinguished and faith itself can stand against hunger and thirst, threat, and worry. There's always a temptation to give up, to think that there's an easier way to find meaning and purpose. And yet, when tragedy or misfortune arise, or when enemies cannot be driven off, faith provides sustenance and strength to meet the days ahead. And so we pray with the people of Ukraine that many will find great strength in these days, that we safely housed in the United States will find faith that leads to action, to sowing seeds of peace, to provide support and solace for those in trouble that the whole world will learn from the present strife that we are all one people, all God's people. Whatever we decide, whatever we decide, God will continue to burn and to dig and to sustain until the true kingdom can rule on earth as it does in heaven. Amen. Now let, let us stand, stand together, together and proclaim, proclaim our, our faith. faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that it is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for, for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, our God is faithful. Let us offer our prayers to God, saying, God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. We bless you and praise you. O oh God, you are God. Eagerly we seek you. Our souls thirst for you. Our flesh faints for you as in a parched and barren land. Refresh your church. Re revive your church with living water. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. We bless you and we praise you. Faithful God, be the comfort and strength of innocent victims and their families. We pray for all those who die suddenly and unprepared. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. We bless you and we praise you. Great mountain God, open our eyes to your presence in the world around us. Set the fire of your presence before us and lead our feet to holy ground. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. Amen. We bless you and we praise you. We pray, O oh God, for victims of sexual violence and abuse. Deliver them, heal their wounds and scars, restore innocence and the ability to trust. Purify our own hearts that we may honor and respect each other. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. O oh God, you are our helper. You hide us under the mighty shadow of your wings. Defend your children from all adversities which may happen to the body or soul, especially Emilio. Andrea, Art, Father Brent, Christina, Mary Boyd, Harry and Marie Bissell, Bill Casal, Diane Dumont, Edward Dufresne, Eric, Giffy Full, Brinley Hall, Grace High, Bethany Hill, Jill, Justin, Kayla, Kira and John Klinger, Keegan, Joanne Creston, Michelle Liberty, Fred Marston, Sophia Partridge, Roland Ronan, Raya, Donnie Smith, Peter Smith, Marshall Smith, Peggy Smith, Fred Stein, Carl, Carolyn Taylor, Judy Thomas, Holly Whalen, and Persis Williams. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. We bless you and we praise you. O oh God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Carl Taylor and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who lives and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, O oh God, now and forever. Amen. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. Amen. We bless you. <clears throat> Excuse me. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God of our fathers and mothers. Feed us with spiritual food. Refresh us with spiritual drink. Preserve us with all your saints forever. God, your loving kindness is better and life itself. We bless you and we praise you. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially David Falk, Sandy McCurdy, Ed Manuel, Pam Peters, Julie Boardman, and Gerald Wheeler. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. We bless you and we praise you. We pray for those in the armed services, especially Abigail, Andy Dittmer, Kyle Carino Mings, and Kevin West. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. We bless you and we praise you. You are invited to add any additional intercessions at this time 
either silently or aloud. For all the children of the world. God, your loving kindness is better than life itself. For your love into our hearts, O God of peace, give us joy in our suffering, endurance in trials, character in times of weakness, and hope in adversity. So may we live, birthed always anew in you, who have grasped and panted for our life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please greet one another. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. Father, in your infinite love, 
love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when you had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We call it his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints to the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Lord, Lord of heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I just have a few announcements. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank, thank Steve for once again standing in um, for doing a superb job. And also the um, quiet thanks to Bob, who has been here, was here until 9.30 last night, getting his old, getting the uh, technology squared away, and is here every Sunday, except when he took off for Caribbean. Um, <laughs> And we're very, very grateful for his being here. And I know Zoomland is very grateful as well. Um, I wanted to give you an update. I spoke actually with Brent this morning, he called. Um, and uh, it's still a long haul. He finished um, tests this week. Uh, and he has, um, he's meeting with the neurologist on Thursday. And then they'll go from there. Everything is still very, very inclusive. In in inconclusive. Thank you. Inconclusive. Um, but he is very, very appreciative of all your cards, all your best wishes, all your prayers. Um, keep them up and, uh, and we'll all get through this um, together. There's a, a, an outreach uh, program that uh, Outreach Committee is, is wanting to support and it's called Hands of Hope. Uh, it's under the auspices of Community Compass. And this is a group of people, who, uh, just very, very grassroots. Three mothers got together and have been working now for six to seven years to help uh, deal with teenagers in the peninsula who are, find themselves homeless. And they are, have something called the Emergency Backpack Program, in which they have backpacks for these kids who really arrive with just the clothes on their back. Um, and in these backpacks are, are clothes and PJs and um, hygiene items. Um, and right now, what we would like to do is provide some backpacks uh, for this program. And these can be either lightly used or, or new backpacks. And if you would like to be part of this, you can bring them and just leave them out in the nave um, at some point, uh, and we'll get them to the people in charge. So the other, um, the other, any other announcements are in your bulletin um, about especially what's coming up on, on Holy Week. Um, we have uh, just a tremendous, tremendous report, support of the local um, clergy uh, who have come together to, to help us um, celebrate Holy Week. And we'll be doing some items together with St. Brendan's, maybe with Trinity. Uh, we'll be doing um, uh, Stations of the Cross at the uh, Congregational Church in town. So uh, we really, really are extraordinarily blessed at St. Francis. And um, I always say it, and I say it again, I'm, I'm certainly blessed to be here and to know all of you. So thank you. Our closing hymn, posing as a post-communion hymn, is hymn 143. <laughs>
forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.